All right, so this video is about the four AI moments in recent history that impressed me the most. Moments that kind of felt like breakthroughs or progress. With an extra bonus thing at the end, so stick around for that. So we're going back to 2015 with AlphaGo. Uh, the ancient game of Go, uh, defeating the Go world champion with an AI system. So this game, Go, it has 10 to the power of 170 possible board configurations. So brute forcing it doesn't work. Um, has to exhibit some kind of intelligence or using its limited resources in order to excel. So this is really cool, but um, it's not AlphaGo itself that I wanted to feature here, it, but actually the follow-up work. So AlphaGo Zero. So this one doesn't use any data from human games. It just plays against itself and starts to solve the game that way. So this is like a blank slate um, game bot that can start to solve these different games. Now these are like perfect information games. There's also games that do not have perfect information, such as like poker because of um, unknowns about the opponent's cards, etc. And there's work that has been done with those kind of games as well, but I felt like this was a key moment and one that impressed because people weren't sure how to do it and then clearly there was a breakthrough with their approach and you know I like games so this was a this was a cool one all right number two the second big moment in AI in my opinion is the release of stable diffusion open source uh, with open weights as well and this would create images. You can type in text and it can make an image. This was the moment when uh, a lot of artists started freaking out on social media. And it was clearly next level. Um, and, you know, the method, this diffusion model ended up, you know, it's so great that it was open sourced, open weights and everything. And, you know, mid journey came out of this, uh, era and you'd have, you know, um, Dolly three on Bing. And I made these like ice worlds out of it, which I thought were kind of interesting. It was, <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool. And not only that, but like, you know, there's like almost like this, grassroots thing going on with it where people are tinkering and messing around and there's these things called LoRa's and embeddings where you can have like an additional data set kind of tacked on to the model to give it a more specified style of what to create so like harnessing more control over it there's also something called I think control net where you could create poses uh, so you get characters and exact poses, etc. All right, so I think all this image generation stuff, going back with Stable Diffusion's release, this was like a big moment in 2022. All right, so next, I think GPT, Chat GPT, and GPT-4. This is the end of 2022 going into 2023. Uh, it was really impressive. What they're able to do obviously they had some problems with making things up or they would just kind of say something plausible but not true but they are very useful and quite powerful and it was definitely another big moment um except instead of generating images this would be generating text but it's cool it could like find problems with your code sometimes and sometimes they were legit solutions uh, of course, there's like recent ones like Claude can now become a bit more multimodal with looking at images and trying to figure out what the image is. And like here's here's an actual very successful description of this image. So that's uh, pretty powerful. And you know, um, you know, even Google Gemini here, I've been I've been testing these bots, 
these chat bots with uh, this question here about getting the disc on trophy and Gemini here actually successfully answers it. It actually uh, cites sources here. So it's actually doing proper search and figuring out the actual true answer and not just making up something that sounds plausible. A lot of bots have failed to answer this question. So this is pretty good. And of course, Meta with Llama open sourcing. Um, Meta is a company also that is uh, pretty cool with their open source attitude. So, you know, there's a lot going on in this area as well. And this is all, you know, all these different fields are kind of intermingling in the general field of artificial intelligence. And uh, so, yeah, that was the third, the third big moment, I think, chat GPT and large language models in general. Um, there's also people on Reddit and 4chan doing that kind of grassroots experimentation as well. And this is really great, I think. Um, I think the open source tinkering, experimenting, etc. is pretty great. But the next big breakthrough, I think, was Sora. I already made a video about this. This was very recent. And the temporal stability, the stability of the image over time was so strong and so realistic in comparison to what came before it really did feel like another step forward this is my fourth uh fourth big moment in ai i've already covered this so i won't look at it too much but uh, it's really impressive although you know i did point out some uh some slight flaws with it in my longer video but it's still just like it feels like another step forward um But I also wanted to cover this other area, which uses AI, but is like, you, you kind of wouldn't quite think of it as AI, maybe. It has to do with this form of digitizing 3D scenes. So there's this um, NERF neural radiance fields. Um, so this is like taking drone footage or photographs and then converting that into a three-dimensional scene. And so these NERFs, NERFs, these ones have this like neural net that is used to synthesize the image from whatever camera angle you want. But of course these are constructed out of like, you know, actual photographs and video frames. It's just the, the new perspective is then synthesized. And so, you know, you can look into it a bit more and you see that it's passing into a neural network they're using gradient descent and yeah. And so that's really awesome. But then there was a new thing that happened and I haven't even looked into this much, but this is called 3D Gaussian splatting. And the idea is that instead of needing this slowly rendering neural model, you can get real time rendering. So it's a similar thing going on, except it's real time. So here is an example of the water lily house at Kew Gardens. I may be mispronouncing that. Running at uh, over 100 frames per second. So it's like a real life place that has been captured in photograph and video and then converted into a three-dimensional scene in which you can move around the camera in real time and i think this is following this there's kind of like this trend about like digitizing the world and this is part of that uh, this one this whole area nerfs and gaussian splatting it's been a bit under the radar compared to the other AI things, but I think it's still important. You can see the reflection is actually rendered as like a solid thing, but yeah, you get the point. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's really good. And so where is this all taking us? Well, I mean, I don't know. We just saw this, I just saw this today and it's like, uh, you know, AI software engineer, it has a, <laughs> it has uh, 
a console and it has like a place to write code and it has like a web browser. So it's got code, it's running commands, running its code, finding errors, then like Googling solutions and then, you know, running tests and figuring out what's wrong, etc. So it's actually this, I just saw this today just by, just, just by chance I saw this. So this is like, I, I don't know, this just came out of nowhere today. So I don't know, this is pretty cool. Um, yeah. I don't know. I thought I would just kind of show these different things because they're pretty impressive and interesting. Um, yeah. Um, I don't have too much to say. just wanted to show those. That's pretty much it. So yeah. Uh, so to go back, it was uh, Alpha Zero. Learning games from nothing and winning at them. And uh, Stable Diffusion. Creating images out of descriptions and then uh, chat GPT uh, ch like really sophisticated chat bots that are now becoming multimodal and then Sora the breakthrough of rendering video from from a text description as well as all the customization that people are doing and tinkering that they're doing also converting 3d world 3d scenes in real life into digital environments um yeah so yep that's it i just wanted to show that it's really cool and i'm still interested in uh well i don't know I, maybe i can talk more in another video that's it for now thanks for listening